Hi everyone, welcome back. If you are interested in CCM's musical theater program, then you're in the right place. Today I'm interviewing one of my very good friends, David. So do you want to introduce yourself? Hi guys, my name's David Littlefield. I'm a senior MT at uh, CCM. So I've been here for three years. I'm in my fourth year right now. Um, I'm originally from Connecticut. Colleen and I have known each other throughout high school. We've done many, many shows together. Um, and I'm excited for the pandemic to be over so we can do another one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so as always, I like to start with the audition process, but I want to admit as I started to reach out and talk to people who are going through the process this year, I know it's very different than the process that both David and I went through, even though I just auditioned a year ago. Yeah. So he's going to talk about what his audition experience was like, but do keep in mind we are aware this year is a little bit different without having unified and in-person auditions. Yeah, so um, kind of what I've gotten about this year so far is last year was our first year that we started doing pre-screens at CCM, um, which actually really, really helped us um, kind of just narrow everybody down. It was just a lot of weekends of auditioning and stuff, so it's just really helped us get to spend actual time with the people that we're interested in, um, which is awesome. And what I'm assuming is gonna happen, I don't believe in-person auditions are gonna happen. I don't really see a point to that right now during, during this time. And I believe we're probably gonna end up with some form of Zoom or something like that. So getting really comfortable with your screen and with what you look like inside of a box, I think is probably the best thing that you can do to get ready for, for this season. Um, obviously, I don't, I actually have no idea what's actually happening, but that's just my best advice. Uh, my college audition experience was really, really awesome. I, I didn't get, I was in, CCM was one of my first auditions and I did it in December and then I was put on hold and then put on the wait list. So I was waiting for a very, very long time um, while I was here and I was kind of in the mindset of, okay, let's audition for as many schools as possible so I end up somewhere. Because I knew that I wanted nothing more than to be studying musical theater in college. Um, so I did over, I did 18 auditions in total. Um, going from unifieds to different campuses. Like I remember one time I flew from Syracuse to Dayton, Ohio, which is like n no planes fly from Syracuse to Dayton, Ohio. But I was like, sorry guys, we gotta figure it out and like, it was like four different planes that we had to get on. Um, but the most important thing is like going in with material that you love, just like really enjoy your time there and show a genuine interest, know something about the school, know that, know why you wanna to go to this school. Like everybody wants to go to CCM because of our alumni, like that's, and if they ask you a question where they're like, hey, why do you wanna to come to school? You'd be like, oh, you know, Karen Olivo is just one of my favorite stars, which is like cool and great. But that's not actually about the school. That's like about what Karen has been able to accomplish outside of CCM, which is amazing, amazing. Um, but do research about what we actually do. And I think that'll really give you a leg up in the audition room. I agree, because also CCM is not the only school. Almost every school asks that why question, like why this program? So I remember one thing I always did was the night before I'd like go on their website and look at faculty and just kind of like review the people who are going to be in the room and review the actual like training you're going to get there because I think the more specific you are to the actual school and the program and the type of training they offer the better in terms of answering that question and then if you can keep it to yourself too and make it personal absolutely I completely agree um and then how many people does CCM accept moving forward our class size is typically around 20 um I've never seen more than uh, that's a lie. Our sophomores are currently 21. Um, my class is 20. The juniors are, I think, 14 right now. But that it, it constantly shifts. It's around 20. Um, about 26 will actually get accepted that year. And then around six usually uh, don't get in. Yeah. Or don't, sorry, don't, no. Out of the, the top six, like, don't come. They all, they've gotten in. Confusing. Yeah. It's, it's like from 26 and then, because people... Very lucky people get multiple offers. Offers, in yeah. And also scholarship is always going to be a factor. There's a lot of reasons why people decide to go to different schools. And yeah, there's a lot that goes into this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, can you also talk about the curriculum? How many Absolutely. performing, 
arts classes, also compared to like core classes you're expected to take? So we are a conservatory style school, um, College Conservatory of Music. Uh, we only have, I believe, six required courses outside of um, our core musical theater program. So our like breadth of knowledge, common core learning is only uh, uh, six different classes. A lot of people came in with um, those classes already covered with AP and stuff. So like, I mean, I have a friend who came in here with a minor already, like sh just from AP credits. You d we don't need that much of like common core learning here. Music theory is our math credit. Like it's a conservatory style Are school. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> Music theory is our That's math. That's amazing. It w yeah, it was pretty great. I haven't taken a math course in four years. <laughs> it's been great. Um, <laughs> but no, I love that because I was saying what I picked a program while I was I was like I want to be in dance classes all day. I want to be singing. I'm like I don't need to be sitting in an English class. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And like performance wise and performance classes, um, you're pretty much in it. Especially your freshman sophomore year, you're pretty much there all day except for your one academic that you go and leave for. You're also required, we are required to be in four shows or um, yeah, basically we're required to be in four shows while uh, throughout our four years at school. Um, most people do way more than four shows at school, but like the minimum, I, I've only done four because of this pandemic, um, but uh, yeah, you're required to do four. And like, it doesn't, it's not like a freshman can't be cast. Everybody is in the casting pool and then you're required to um, perform as cast. Awesome. Didn't I remember your freshman year you mentioned, aren't you required to take some sort of like backstage, whether it be like a scenic design or like a lighting class, and then don't you have to help a production on some aspect? Yeah, so the spring of our um, freshman year, we take a tech class, which is just, it's just for MTs and it's pretty generic. It's kind of, kind of covers every element. We had like four hours of shop that we had to attend a week. So we would like go in and help build the sets because uh, UC, University of Cincinnati actually uses that scene shop to rent out sets as well. So like people will come to us and the tech department will design a set for a different theater and then build it in house and it'll ship out and it helps us be able to do the lavish productions that we get to do in school. It helps with money wise. Um, so you do about four hours a week of, of help with that in your semester or your, in your second semester. And then you also are on the crew for one show um in the in the course of the spring that's amazing and then with the curriculum because i know when i was breaking down programs i was always really interested to see where certain schools like put their focus in terms of acting singing dancing and i've personally always considered ccm pretty triple threat would you agree or do you find that your well teachers like, you know um <laughs> <laughs> you said toss the wig um i I do, I do, I do really believe in that. And honestly, Eric Santagata, who is our new head, is really pushing us to be even more than a triple threat program. Like people can do everything that there's gymnastics, there's playing instruments, there's being an activist, there's so much more that actors and artists can do. And that's what we are at the end of the day is artists. Um, and so defining it as that, as opposed to a triple threat program, I kind of like more, but yes, uh, we have, uh, um, we have acting three times a week for two hours, um, dance twice a week, for an hour and a half, uh, which is like, sorry, just jazz for that amount of time. We also have ballet classes, we have tap classes. Um, we take a modern class our junior year, and then you'll get private voice lessons for an hour every week, um, as well as like, like vocal performance classes. So we have like vocal coaching, we have um, audition tech, we have, those are pretty much our two like vocal acting classes. What about performing outside of school? What are your guys' connections to regional, summer stock? They are really great about letting us, um, like in the spring semester, they know that we're gonna be traveling all around the country to go to auditions and stuff. And they're really great with letting us do summer work. Year round work, work is a little bit different. Yeah, but what about summers mainly in terms summers. of like getting a professional resume while still in college? Um, yeah, I, they're great about letting us go to the auditions. It's not really like we're going to get you in auditions. Sometimes they bring, um, sometimes some theaters will like come to, act, to the campus actually and audition all of the students here, um, which is a really great opportunity. But at the end of the day in New York, it's going to be on us to kind of 
get up and figure out where we want to audition and how many open calls we want to go to that day. So they're kind of in the same boat of like, find your summer stuff. That, that's what you want to do. If that's like actually where you see your career path going kind of on you more. That's pretty awesome though. Because yeah. I think you're right. Once you're in the city, like it's on you to wake up and go to that audition and figure out your day and how you're going to make it work as, as with the survival job or. Yeah. You, know. you got to tell your boss, Hey, sorry. Can't do that shift today. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they need me in for another callback or something like that. Like it's absolutely, it's on you to kind of figure out all that. I mean, I've driven there last year. It was for like two months straight where I went to Chicago and Pittsburgh and St. Louis, and then back to St. Louis a different weekend to do a different theater. And it's just like, was so much gas, but that's, <laughs> that's what you do. Yeah. I, I found even just like your first year of college and then I'm sure you've found this even more as you continued, but it does feel like this training program to be a professional. Like it's not like once you graduate, then you're a professional. Like it starts when you're in school and figuring out like how to make it through long days and what your body needs, what your voice needs and there you balancing will, act you learn you, early. You will Honestly, what I think BFA programs are doing is working you so hard that the city seems easy. <laughs> like there is nowhere in New York City that I will have 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. classes and rehearsal. Like that's just not gonna happen. And I, I personally am a person that thrives on that. So like in this less than a year that I'm graduating and I'm like, oh boy, what am I gonna do with my life? Um, it's It's like an overwhelmingly they, they're shoving the city in your face. They're shoving, not even just the city, the industry in your face and overexposing you to things so that everything is in your wheelhouse when you get there. Yeah. It's an exciting feeling too. Like I oh, feel like if people are watching this, they shouldn't be scared. Not at like, all. Like 8 like a.m. ballet sounds like hell, but like you learn to embrace it. And it there's just something so thrilling about it because I think you spend your whole life, like you can't really do that schedule as much as, you kind of start to in high school it's like you couldn't do that when you were younger and dreaming of broadway and so once you get to school and you start living those crazy 12-hour days as tiring as it is it's also very thrilling i find yeah and listen it's like it's for you like it's they're not none of this is ever vindictive or like slapping a ruler on your wrist although it kind of seems like it sometimes on paper you're like oh my god um but it's for your betterment. It's to unlock that artist that is inside of you. And at the end of the day, it's what you wanted to do. <laughs> like you're the one who auditioned for this school. You're the, you, you definitely have something inside of you to share and they're just helping you unlock it and giving you all of the tools to unlock it. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. um, so what about your, I almost said fourth semester cause I am it's fourth semester, but for you guys, your senior year, can you talk about showcase and you know, once you kind of have that training, now you're ready to graduate and branch out. How is CCM helping you? Yeah, um, that's changing a lot this year with our new head, uh, Eric Sanagata. He's really, he's- we Love you, Eric. Love you, Eric. Uh, he is, he's from the industry. He literally was working in it last year. And like, he was the associate on the Falsettos tour with James Lapine. Like, I mean, huge, like done some huge, huge thing, really understands what how the industry works from both sides of the table um so he's kind of coming in and changing how ccm releases their students into the world kind of and really sitting us down and and showing us how to do our taxes or like how not even like that but like you know what i mean like how to exist as a yeah as that too as a performer like contracts knowing the money and the business side of this i think is is huge, huge. Um, and that's you, something Sorry, cut you off. I was gonna say that's something I would never have thought to look for in a program, but now like I'm so glad I have that available because it's like it doesn't matter how high you can go and like kick your face if you're gonna like drown yourself financially and not know how to save money or get yourself caught in a bad contract because you didn't know any better. Exactly. It's it's teaching you how to live life, um, which is really really exciting and helpful. I feel like I'm turning into a human being for the first time in my life which is kind of cool. Um, but we had a masterclass actually, speaking of like finances and contracts and stuff, we had a masterclass the other day with Eden Espinoza and Karen Olivo, um, who have started this non-for-profit that's kind of helping, well, it is helping um, 
actors know where the money that they are making goes to. So like, sorry about that. Uh, so it, I don't know if many people know, but when you, there was a whole kind of blow up thing in the theater community this summer about um, the Nederlanders, the Nederlander theater organization uh, donating to 45's campaign. Um, yeah. And the, Karen, who was someone who performed in one of those theaters, felt so betrayed by the fact that she had given her art to something that she didn't believe in. And you can believe in whatever you want. I'm not talking about that. It's just the yeah. knowledge that you have to have like know what's happening in the industry, know where your money's going, know where your art is going and who you're giving that to is so important. And that's something that we're learning this year. Um, and then besides that, obviously showcase is guaranteed to every single senior. It's not an audition based showcase. Um, can't really say much about how we're evolving it right now, um, but it is going to be new. It is going to be exciting. Um, Surprises. A <laughs> couple of surprises coming down the line, so be sure to keep an eye out for our showcase. Um, but yeah, everybody gets pretty much two whole songs and then a 16 bar cut. Um, you can do whatever you want with it. We have dancers, we have people playing guitar, people playing piano, and they shape it. Two, we have two faculty members who are like the main people who work on it. And then we also have Rachel Hoffman and Justin Bohan uh, who work with us and uh, help us create, who are, if you don't know who they are, they're major, major casting directors uh, from New York who yeah. help us assist, uh, help us shape the showcase. Yeah. That's amazing. So that's my main questions and my points that I wanted to touch on. Do you want to say any final things, maybe about why you chose CCM or what makes the program so different than other programs in your opinion? Um, what's, what's huge for me is the community that we have here. Like, I was, not to like toot my own horn, but like, was put in a Facebook group with like, people who have really big names in New York as soon as I got accepted into this program. I was, I was literally like, just thrown into this family of people who are going to take care of me and are going to help me find a sublet when I move to New York and help just be there to be on your journey with you and I'm going to do the same for the people below me. Um, so that's really huge for me about TCM. And then the other thing that I like still like drool over about this school is our production value. Like I, I cannot get over how gorgeous the shows are at this school. And like the fact that I got to be in 42nd Street like just the production values through the roof which is, was really important to me coming to school. I was like, I know I'm gonna be going through some, some rickety crickety jobs once I get out of school. Like I'm gonna do some gorgeous shows right now. That's a very good point. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you so much, David. I hope for everyone watching, this was useful. As always, comment down below if you have more questions about the program and I can always send you David's way if you wanna talk to a current student to learn more. I'd be happy so, to talk to all of you. Thank you for watching. And thank you, David. Bye, guys. Good evening.